What's up guys, Antoine here at DPR. We're doing a second week on how not to die during this market crash. If you're ready, let's jump right into that. Last week's video was mostly about, you know, right now it's the best time to invest and you should focus on that. If you can, uh, prices have never been lower and the selection of available animals is absolutely insane for crazy prices. So that was the main subject last week. So this week, I wanna give you three tips on how to survive this crash. So tip number one, cut down your breeding. What I mean by that is, you know, I oftentimes like during the year, you know, I plan out uh, the breeding that I want for the next season. And sometimes, you know, some females are kind of left here and there. And I'm like, what am I really going to breed to you? I don't really know. You could go to that male. You could go to that male. But mm, I'm not sure. Most of the time, those are the females that I'm going to let go at the end of the year. Uh, they're not bad breeders. They're not unworthy females. It's just that in my collection right now, either I've already made some clutches from them that are, you know, in the projects that I want. Or they're just not relevant for what I'm shooting for in my collection at the current moment. That's one thing that you have to do in your collection, not necessarily in any crash or, or any market precisely, but you need to go through your collection and look at, you know, what is best to keep and what is best maybe to move. That's gonna have a really significant impact on the quality of animals you produce. So in a market that's more difficult, like right now, what I would highly suggest is to identify those females that, you know, you're not really sure if they still fit. You could do a clutch, but not necessarily the best ones. Um, I'll give you an example here. I have a Krypton female, and although she's a good breeder, she's a good eater, right now in the collection, just a single gene Krypton is not necessarily the female that I would have the most use of. Um, you know, so this female is on Morph Market right now for that reason. Um, I could still keep her and just not breed her right now since I have like a bunch of animals here and the room is getting pretty crowded with all the holdbacks from last year uh, that are close to need a you know tub upgrade, those females might as well let them go now. They're ready to go and good breeders. So the main idea is gonna be that in a market where sales are tougher, you wanna make sure that you don't overproduce animals that are hard to sell. You know, the big ticket items, the very valuable animals, the investment or the specific projects, those are always you know good to breed because they're not readily available, so those are the animals that you want to do. But the general snakes that, you know, they're everywhere on Morph Market, they're common at shows, a lot of breeder will produce them. Uh, you see them available already right now. Those are maybe not the best pairings for your collection. Although if you want to produce those animals for yourself and hold back, it is the best time to be your number one customer. By far, all the animals that right now you are keeping will benefit you so much in three, four years, especially the babies, the females, those are gonna be very valuable in the future. So for your coming season, cut down on you know the non-essential stuff, and then the very specific stuff for your collection, for your projects, your vision, those are still the animals that you wanna breed, but you specifically don't wanna give them away. If those animals are not selling, be prepared to keep more females. I'll give you an example. Right now in my hands, I have three regular females that are worth over $20,000. It's kind of crazy to think that, you know, those regular looking snakes are just super valuable. But those three females are Triple Head, Desert Ghost, Sentinel, and Clown. And right now I have those three females available on Morph Market at a, you know, price that I judge that this project is worth for a pair of Triple Heads. I don't really mind if I sell those females or if I end up keeping them. At the end of the day, right now, they're worth about 20 grand for the three of them. But if I do raise them, breed them in three, four years, and I produce some triple visuals at that point, I have three more females to that project. So it puts me in a super good position to maybe produce more than one and manage to sell one or two in that project. Just imagine how much, even in two or three years, a Desert Ghost Sentinel Clown would be worth. That's a lot of money in there, a lot of feisty, that means they eat really good. Um, so. Either I sell them all this year or next year and I make 20 grand, or I keep the three of them, feed them, could cost me you know, a couple hundred bucks each, and breed them, it gives me more chances to actually hit that triple. And if I make males with cool doms in it, it gives me more chances of making crazy stuff. So right now, this is kind of the you know strategy you need to have in order to you know really be successful for the next 
one or two years. It's really not about the price. I could significantly drop the price of these animals and still ended up keeping them or not moving them. It's not about the price. Um, it's really about, you know, the economy. It's more difficult. Times are rougher. So I want to be my best own customer. So these females, I've moved them all to the whole back rack. Anyways, right now, shipping is closed to the US until April. Um, even though I could do some payment plans or whatnot and sell maybe one or two of those, um, I really don't mind and I will not drop the price for this project, mostly because I don't mind holding them back. This is one thing you have to consider when you breed for this coming season. If you have animals that you don't mind holding back, you're setting yourself for a really good year. All right, so tip number two. This one is gonna be a bit more tricky, but it's your media exposition. What I mean by that is that, you know, right now is probably the best time to be more out there, more present, and to give back to that community. Um, it can be in form of doing more shows. Uh, it could be doing YouTube videos. It could be creating amazing reels on Instagram. It could be opening uh, a TikTok account to talk about snakes. Anything works right now, and I feel like in a down, the more you grind, the more you work, the more you put yourself out there, when that market comes back up and people want to invest, who are they going to invest in? Well, it's going to be the people that carried that whole industry when it was at a lowest point. And I feel like this is truly important. Everybody can have an Instagram page. Everybody can post snakes out there. Like the names, they all blur, the exotics, the morph, the this and that. Like, you know, everybody has an Instagram page. Everybody posts. It's not special. Having an Instagram account doesn't make you, you know, more than anyone. Going that extra mile is gonna be creating more content, creating valuable content, helping people out. This is more what I'm talking about here. Uh, it, it's really, really crucial to really focus on this. And I really feel like when the market is gonna come back up, you'll be in a great position with a lot of viewers, a lot of you, a lot of attention to move your animals. Tip number three, this is more of a technical one, but it's gonna be to cut down your costs. Um, in business, you know, oftentimes when people are jumping in into uh, new projects, they want to grow, grow, grow. They want to see their income increase, more sales, more customer, more products, more this, more that. It, it works amazingly well uh, when the economy is booming because, you know, you can push products, can push animals, uh, and that's just going to bring you more money. When we're at a lower point, uh, it's really important to look inwards of your business, I analyze like what is costing you? Analyze? Analyze? It's analyze. You'll have to analyze. Well, apparently I can't say analyze because it's not the proper word. It's analyze. But I probably have said that, you know, 50,000 times during my videos. And it's just now that I realize that it's not analyze, but analyze. Um, but you'll have to analyze. Um, <laughs> make it better. <laughs> it really doesn't make it better. Uh, but you'll have to do that with your business and do that thing that I'm saying totally wrong um, with your costs and everything that you're spending because when the money doesn't come in as easily as it was, uh, cutting down your costs is gonna be one of the most efficient way to carry yourself through that tougher time. Uh, it can be by you know breeding less animals and having you less expensive rodent bill. It can be by insulating your garage or whatever you're in to cut down on heating costs. It could be stacking on things when they're on sale, like scut towel or any other things that you can use in your breeding. Also, if you're able to maybe breed a small portion of your rats, uh, this is a really good way to save on money uh, if you have that time, you know. But every little things that you can do to save money right now is going to save you maybe uh, a breakout where you know you can't breed anymore because financially it's not possible by doing so you can really be prepared for the future for what's going to come later on next season the year after that uh you can't base yourself on you know i made you know 50 60 000 in sales this year i'm going to make the same thing next year so i should be good so that's it for you know i think this two-parter of my little tips on how to survive this market crash it's going to come back i mean to me selling ball pythons and buying ball pythons is has been like the greatest thing in my life so i don't see why people would stop being interested in those animals where we haven't even scratched it well actually yeah we scratched the surface but still the iceberg is still under the eyes there's so many things that we haven't seen in this industry so many animals you know that can be produced and, and so many breeders you know, you, you tell me right now, how many Desert Ghost Clown female would you want to have? Well, I mean, I could have I could have a full rack of Desert Ghost Clown female, yet I don't have a single one. I don't have a single Desert Ghost Clown visual female. Um, so, so many things that, you know, we can still add to this hobby 
so many good years ahead. It's just a rougher time. Brace yourselves, follow those tips, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go check our Instagram. We have a new one, by the way. The other one got banned. Um, link down below and go check our available animals. We'll have them ready to ship in April to the United States and still a few more here in Canada. But on this, uh, cheers and stay tuned.